repairing a 5 inch gauge model works pannier tank this is part 10 making sure that the mechanical lubricator works and is reliable by running the locomotive using compressed air for an extended period when the steam oil appears at the other end of the disconnected oil feed pipe then all is well when this engine is sat on the rolling road on my workbench which is actually a soundboard the mechanical noise from the engine is amplified it's a piece of kitchen worktop on top of a kitchen unit. I almost forgot, why is there a piece of cloth tied over the chimney? Well, the answer to that is quite simple. Running an engine indoors for an extended period is not good for your health. Along with the compressed air exiting the engine is also oil vapour that I don't want to breathe in. Hence a piece of cotton cloth fitted over the chimney. In this clip I'm filling the lubricator. I'm fairly confident that it will now work. But first, a few words regarding this type of lubricator. Important, this is a one-way sprag clutch type of lubricator. And the reason that there are two brass collars which can be tightened onto the drive shaft to hold oil seals as shown in a previous episode and to remove all pressure from the sprag clutch. If the operating lever is tight up against the collar, then the one-way clutch will not work properly. The clutch rollers need to be perfectly aligned with the drive shaft. This is quite unlike the principle of the ratchet type of mechanical lubricator, which needs a bit of friction on the operating lever to hold it against the ratchet. In this clip with the engine running and the camera looking at the lubricator, you can see that it is revolving perfectly, no hesitation at any part of the rotation. Why is the engine bobbing up and down? There is nothing wrong, it's just dancing a bit on the springs. Don't forget, the boiler is empty and the tanks are empty, so it's very light at the moment. Plus, on this engine, which hasn't done a lot of running, the axle boxes are quite a tight fit in the horn blocks. This clip shows the engine after about an hour's running, and it's not bobbing up and down quite so much because the axle boxes are getting bedded in. As far as miniature locomotives go, this one is quite lightweight. But the more I run it, the smoother it gets. In this episode, I ran the engine for a long time. The video that you see is very heavily edited. I want to check that the oil pump is working fine. And when oil appears at the end of the pipe, which sticks out at the front, then I know that the oil pump is working. The engine is getting smoother all the time. I'll stop talking and let you have a listen. I marked the end of the lubricator shaft using a felt tip pen and now you can see how smoothly it's revolving. After about an hour's running there was no deviation in the rotational speed of the pump. It's running quite well at a slow speed too. It will of course run much better when it's sat on a track because there isn't much flywheel effect when it's sat on the rolling road. Further proof that the lubricator is working, here is a shot where I filled the tank right to the top. And here is the lubricator tank after about 20 minutes running. As you can clearly see, the level is going down inside the tank. A very small amount of oil is pumped at each revolution and it took quite a while before the oil appeared at the other end of the pipe. But at last, here it is. This, of course, is special steam cylinder oil, much thicker than normal oil. You must never use normal lubricating oil or motor oil in a steam engine cylinder lubricator. Once it was found that the oil pump worked perfectly, I connected the end of this oil pipe to the check valve on the steam chest. I'm opening the smoke box door. So you can see what's going on inside the smoke box. First of all, I remove the crossbar from inside the door. 
With the crossbar out of the way, if you look carefully at the blast pipe, you can see traces of oil around the top of it. This close-up shot shows the oil around the top of the blast pipe. When running miniature steam locomotives, it's always a good idea to keep your eye on the top of the chimney. The soot around the chimney should contain oil residue and be a very black colour. If it's light grey, then there's a good chance you're not getting enough oil. Time now for a cosmetic repair. The handrail was broken at one side of the engine. It's time now to fix it. I'm using cyanoacrylate adhesive on the front stanchion and the broken stanchion at the left-hand side. To avoid confusion, I also mean on the right-hand side of this image. I held the broken part in place securely until the cyano had cured. And that's about it. All I have left to do is strap the oil pipe to the existing piping and fit something to stop the nuts working loose underneath the suspension. For this, I'm going to use silicone rubber tubing. Lock nuts are okay, but they're very fiddly if you need to adjust them. Silicone rubber tubing, in conjunction with the spring pressure, stops the nuts from working loose. The engine now works quite well in forward and reverse. Now it's the end of the episode and the series. I'd like to say, as I always do, stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.